Creative Cloud Evangelist, talking to you about developing applications in web. I want to give him a warm welcome, please. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Piotr Walczyszyn. I'm a Adobe Creative Cloud Evangelist. And my work is actually to, yeah, that's what I'm doing here. So basically present at conferences like this one and talk about technologies, not only related to Adobe, but basically, you know, web, web technologies. Uh, so today my topic is around responsive web design. And those of you that don't know what responsive web design, raise your hand. What, what it is? You don't know? Okay, that's good. <laughs> okay, at least one person. Uh, so uh, I'll be covering, you know, uh, at the very beginning, I'll try to sort of set the background, what, uh, what is responsive web design, why, why it is relevant these days. And then I'll go into some details of tools and techniques that you can use to build your own websites, uh, which are responsive. Okay, so um, to set some facts, um, uh, somewhere around this year, uh, around 2013, the number of mobile devices, so these are either phones or tablets, will outgrow the number of desktop devices. And this is based on the uh, Comscore survey done in 2012. So I assume that sometime, we already probably have reached this point where more people worldwide uh, access the internet and the website and the web basically using mobile devices and uh, not desktops anymore. Uh, so this, uh, this fact actually makes you think, you know, when I design my website for me, for my customer, well, should I be actually thinking first about mobile as it's becoming actually the, you know, uh, more important right now uh, than designing for the desktop? And of course, I believe, you know, those two audiences and desktop and mobile are really relevant because they are, uh, when you sum them up, it's about 3.5 billion devices worldwide that access the web. So basically we should think, we should be thinking about those two groups. And uh, responsive web design is actually approach uh, for web developers to create uh, content to create experience for web uh, for users uh, and the, and the idea here is that you create a single site that will actually run no matter what device what screen resolutions it runs on so it's a single site that runs well on mobile device and nicely scales and adapts and re uh, reflows itself uh, to show up on a, on a on the phone on a tablet on a desktop and maybe in the future on the refrigerator screen or maybe in the future or not even future on the your TV set Right now, most of the smart TVs that we have at home, which are like 50 inch, you know, wide, they already have a browser running and you can already browse your web through there. So you want the users that use your site, you use your website, you want them to have the best experience ever. So they get attracted that they return to you. Uh, and responsive web design term as it is right now was actually coined by Ethan Marcot and that's a bit of a history so he uh, he m first time he mentioned about it it was in 2010 at his uh, blog post and it was in May and later one year later he wrote a book about it and that's you know that's a bit of a history that's where those sparkled and started to sort of a uh, uh, blossom and 2013 right now uh, is the year where almost everybody is doing responsive these days and when I go to IT conferences uh, I've been you know I do those conferences like this one I do uh, every month almost uh, there's always a topic about responsive web design N not even one there's like almost half of the topics are about responsive web design. So it tells us that this really important um, sort of as move in the web uh, in, in general. So from 2010, the responsive web and the concepts behind it have really um, changed and moved forward from what was initially uh, defined by Ethan. And I have a question for you, uh, because Ethan in his blog post, he defined uh, three techniques. 
uh, which are sort of a, a base for any responsive uh, design. And do you know at least one, any, any of you from the audience knows what, was, what are those three techniques? Very good. Sorry? Ah, uh, CSS media query, sorry, yeah. Yeah, so, no, but th this is not something, uh, well, you don't have a special subsite, it's always the same site. Usually, you know, the idea about the responsive web design is actually not creating a separate site for mobile, separate site for the desktop. It's a, the same site. It's usually the same HTML file that actually adapts to itself. Very good. Thank you. So let me show you the, the rest of those three. Um, so as you mentioned, the, the media queries, very important part of this is media queries, which came with the CSS3 specification. Uh, but starting from, uh, from left is flexible fluid grid. So we as a web developer, developers um, before re responsive web designs we're used to defining or designing our sites based on some um, fixed usually uh, grid system so there's you know dozens of grid systems 960 grid system and and so on uh, 960 stands for nine, uh, 960 pixels and it came from uh, it came from it that 960 was actually a really good value to squeeze your content in where most of the devices had uh, 1024 pixels resolution uh, or, or the width. Uh, so it was really good to have 960. And now, of course, there are other values like 1280 and so on because the screen resolutions are growing and growing. But really, the idea here is that those uh, these were fixed. Now, you can still uh, go with the... Uh, grid systems but they should be scaling to the size of the screen they don't shouldn't be fixed in a uh, in a pixels uh, uh, mm, uh, unit now flexible images and media that's also very important part of it uh, of media of uh, responsive web design it's because we want our content to scale so we want our images or even embedded videos to scale to the size of the screen so that's the idea here and media queries so media queries are <coughs> um, is this concept of actually applying different dimensions or different flow uh, for elements based on the CSS uh, definitions and I want to show you some of those techniques actually uh, in practice uh, so if I go into my uh, um, HTML editor, which is in this case brackets, um, so I want to start with the flexible, actually, uh, fluid grid. Uh, so in this example, you can see there's some sort of a grid system behind it. And it has uh, three columns. And those columns are actually uh, fluid. So in sense that when I scale my browser window, the 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 grid system actually scales with it. And let me show you uh, what CSS, so what definition behind it, st uh, it stands. So if I go in here and uh, take a look at the CSS width, it says, uh, because there are three columns, so it actually divides it by, you know, 33% point, and there is as much as you, as you can put uh, behind the decimal point, it's really good. It may look ugly, but it's really good, you know, you can divide, in this case, it's a simple division by three from 100 but if you would m divide you know you would want to have five um, okay five is not a good number but uh, other values that divide uh, into uh, uh, not a full integer values it's good to put as much as possible behind a decimal point because as much precision you give the, this will be as much as possible uh, reflected by the browser. So browser estimates the right pixels based on those values. So remember, don't be scared about uh, putting uh, accurate values like this one. So you can see here, these are three columns and they scale. So it's a percentage-based uh, definition. Now, if I go in here and uh, check out the flexible images and media, 
Uh, so let's take a look at that. Uh, in this case, you can see I have and this is an Im image, of course, of London, as you can see. And the way this image is embedded, it's a simple, of it uses simple image tag here, as you can see. But this class definition here, as you can see, defines it as a max width. So, and max width sets to 100%. So it tries to squeeze in inside of an image box. And if I scale now, this uh, the browser window, you can see that this image without any distortion uh, nicely scales and it doesn't uh, change the proportions of this image because height is automatically adjusted to width. But the trick here is the m setting max width to 100% and that helps in, a, in most of the browsers and it works in most of the browsers. And the last thing here is the media queries which we already mentioned. So you can see still this is our uh, s similar example as with the grid system, except here, uh, the grid system here will actually reflow itself um, based on the screen resolution. So if I go, go a full screen mode, like this, it's then it uses the thing that we had at the very beginning, so 33 you know, percent uh, for each column. Now, if I start moving down or s scaling down my window, okay, come on, there we go. So you can see it will, oh, there you go, the third column jumps, reflows itself below the first two. If I go further down, it will actually uh, become uh, a single column layout and they are all, all beneath each other. And how this is done? This is done through the media queries. So if I go in and look in, so here I have those diff elements with those um, in column one, column two, column three. But if I take a look at the media queries that are behind it uh, in my CSS file, here we go. So I have uh, this special media tag that defines uh, that if my screen resolution is less than 480 pixels or equal, uh, then uh, the width of the columns should be 100%. Uh, so each column will take 100% of its container, so it re will reflow each other that is behind it into a new uh, into new row. Now, if I take a look, so this is this uh, this situation where we have 480 pixels like this. Uh, now, if I go in and change something to maybe like a tablet layout, you can see I have this defined here. Uh, so the range of the minimum width 100, uh, 481 pixels up to uh, 1023 pixels. I have a situation like this. First two columns should be 50% side by side to each other, and the third one should be 100%, so it reflows itself uh, to the new row. And the last uh, situation is where, and we already had that in the first example, is that where we have uh, width of a, uh, each one is sep uh, it's equally uh, divided into three, and this is in a, in a situation where we have minimum width of uh, 1024 pixels or above. Okay, so that's a little bit of a b basics behind it. Now let me go back to my presentation and show you some of the ab real examples of some sites that actually use media queries. And really a good place to start looking for inspirations uh, where, you know, how others do media queries is go to this site. Uh, so it's the address, the URL is media queries as written like this. And there is really beautiful listing of different, you know, sites that have media queries. So you can see like a list apart, let's say here, this is actually where Ethan Markov's blog post was uh, posted for the first time and so on. So there are like dozens of different sites which actually nicely uh, work. And you can see if I scale, you can see this graphics nicely scales. Uh, some things lay out in a single column layout and so on. Maybe this is not the like a most beautiful example, uh, but let's say like, let's look at how this one works. Again, the image is scaling 
now it hides the left side column and becomes probably a menu which you can uh, here um, uh, collapse and expand and so on. So, so you can see this is becoming a, a single column layout again. And now um, I want to show you something that I have built myself um, for inspecting media queries. So if you go to a site uh, that actually you see that it scales, that it adapts, it changes something. If you change the windows, uh, your uh, window resolution, but you don't really know what is happening under the hood. So for Chrome, I created this plugin, which is called Responsive Inspector. And once you find it in a Chrome web store, uh, you'll get it and install it. You'll get this icon here. And you can click it on it, and it will actually inspect the site there that you're currently visiting. And you'll see all the media queries that are defined for that site. And this site, you can see it has, uh, well, pretty nice uh, uh, list of media queries. And this is also brings, out, brings up another topic, which I will cover in a few minutes. Uh, so when you think about media queries, don't try to think, uh, don't try to lock yourself into some common breakpoints. Uh, so don't try to think, OK, the most common resolution for I for uh, smartphones is 480 pixels or for tablets 768. This is not really a good approach and I'll tell you why in a few seconds. But here you can see that um, here you have almost like pixel by pixel uh, at some points. They change the some slight things uh, and let's see what happens. So the cool thing about the responsive inspector, you can actually click on each resolution and it will change the, you know, browser uh, window into the size that is defined in that media query so you can actually see uh, what is happening between each query so you can see here and here and so on another example that I like to show actually responsive inspector is actually Vogue and the UK version of Vogue so you can see here is also a ton of uh, media queries that are defined and there is like very sometimes very subtle changes that they make. Maybe a font size of a single element. But this is really ins really important for the user to have really rich experience and and see the side the way the designer wanted to, see to him or her to see. And another cool thing about Responsive Inspector, which I encourage you, of course, to go ahead and download it, is that not only that you can scale the browser window size, but you can actually click here and it actually will go to that CSS style sheet and uh, show you that media query that defines it. So I just clicked on, on the right hand side there. Uh, let me go back. So it shows there. Another thing, uh, another cool thing about it is that if you want to take a full page screenshot, so you want to see, maybe you want to share with your customer. Uh, so you're designing this website and you want to have a full page screenshot from bo from top to bottom. Uh, you can do it actually with this here as well. Uh, so you can select at which resolution you want to test it. So let's say this one and click this uh, camera. And what it does, it actually scrolls through that page and stitches all the uh, screenshots um, for the whole page width. And you can see I have the full page screenshot, which I can now save to a file and save to the customer. So that's a, I just, that's a sort of a side project that I've been doing at wor when working at Adobe because it helps me actually to explain how media queries work. So I encourage you to give it a try, uh, play around with it, and uh, and use it uh, uh, for your work. All right. So remember, media queries. This site, really great place to discover really great design, responsive designs. Okay, so uh, let's go further. So let's talk about some techniques uh, that you can use while doing a responsive uh, web. So uh, first of all, and this goes back 
to, uh, to what I said at the very beginning, that in 2013, somewhere this year, the number of mobile devices will outgrow, or the users that use mobile devices to access the web will outgrow the number of users that uh, use desktop computers to access the web. And there are two approaches when you make a new design or you build a new website. Uh, either a desktop down, so you first design a desktop version of your site with a, in a full resolution, maybe like uh, 1030, uh, I don't know, 1366, this is the most common resolution of uh, desktop computers right now, uh, and then you start, you know, stripping it down, so going down with some resolution, maybe removing some elements, reflowing it, and so on. Or you can take a different approach, which seems to be better approach these days, is that you first design an experience that user will have on a small device, and you start going up uh, with your design. So first take a mobile approach, and then start adding elements that um, maybe, you know, got hidden during, you know, that are not visible or not necessary on a mobile device, but are um, uh, good to have on a desktop. So it's up to you, but personally, when I start a new project right now, I go mobile first approach, and then I go up and start scaling up my design. Um, next one, this is again something I already mentioned. Um, two approaches when you think about designing your responsive uh, website. Design first or common breakpoints. Uh, what it means, uh, common breakpoints are those that I mentioned that uh, usually we tend, this is a, a typical thing when you start designing and, and you start thinking, okay, so what's the most typical resolution for a smartphone? Maybe 480 pixels uh, for a smartphone. For tablet, 768 or 1024 depends, you know, in which uh, mode it is. Uh, but this is really not the way uh, you will provide the best actually experience to the user because you will first of all lock yourself with a design uh, into a very strict resolutions. And uh, the better approach is you want you start thinking, okay, what is the design? how it should look like and then you like I showed you wi with this example with Vogue you s you design it for the smallest let's say resolution let's say 320 pixels for the old generation of, s of smartphones and you start going up but pixel by pixel and you start scaling up and you're going to the to the point where you see okay this doesn't look good anymore. Now I can maybe make the header bigger, or I can make this uh, font uh, bigger, or you know, you start changing elements. And I'll show you how to do that with some tools in a few seconds. But this way, you c you go from the very you know very bottom and you go up into the desktop uh, resolutions. And good really reason for that. Uh, if you look at the site, which URL is screenresolution.org. If you start thinking about common resolutions, then try to figure out what is the most common resolution if you look at this list of the most common resolutions. So I'm still scrolling, and this is the list of, you know, of the, the common resolutions that people have on their devices, computers, you know, LCD screens, and so on. So it's, there's like a few thousand actually uh, different resolutions there out in the wild uh, available and people actually have those uh, devices that access your content. So you will never ever be able to uh, define really a common resolution if you look at this list of few thousand uh, elements uh, there. All right, next one. Uh, this one, it's, it's more technical but um, we used to think we used to we are very used to thinking in terms of pixels when we were designing uh, and especially media queries. Again, we can design for th 320 pixels resolution, 480, 768 different p different resolutions which are expressed in pixels. 
But there's another technique. There's also a technique to express your media queries. So those breakpoints will, will actually modify your design in uh, different um, units of measure. And these are, let's say, EMs. Who knows what EM is? All right, there's like a few hands. So EM is a relative uh, unit of measure which is based on the font size of the container uh, in which your element is embedded. So by default, uh, browsers set a font size of HTML page. If you don't modify it on a body tag or an HTML tag, by default, current browsers these days define uh, a font size of 16 pixels. And EM is actually a multiplication of that value. And this today is 16 pixels on desktop computers but on mobile computer on mobile devices it's a different it, it's usually a, a, there's a different uh, pixel density and also this the font size is also uh, can be different and uh, let's say you want to launch your um, your application or your website on a TV screen which is which has uh, 55 inch uh, resolution and in this case the default font size, it's not 60 pixels anymore, it's about probably twice, it's about 32 pixels. So really EM is a relative value to that font size. And in my opinion right now, uh, I would be leaning towards actually doing EM-based media queries. Because this way you don't get stuck into a certain uh, values of, of resolutions and your content will scale the best no matter where you actually uh, launch it. So no matter if it's, again, desktop, a mobile device, or refrigerator screen. And there's really um, a lot of examples out there. And one of the really nice examples that uses uh, EM-based uh, EM media queries is actually a site of a conference that was in London this year. Uh, it's a UX-based uh, conference, so those guys really know what they're doing uh, in terms of UX and design. And here you can see, even with my responsive inspector, is that all the values here, they're expressed in EMs. So uh, about 60 EM, this is 35 EM, and so on. And I can show you actually what it translates to. So in my browser you can see and this uh, tooltip above shows that uh, this media query, so 60EM, actually translates to uh, 960 pixels uh, because it's a multiplication whatever of whatever default font uh, size uh, was there and it's probably 16 pixels because 60 times 16 it's 960. And so it requires a little bit of math, but and it hurts the brain a little bit at the very beginning when you start, you know, playing around with EMs because it's always relative. So you have to do a little bit of a math in your head uh, once you define your media queries. But once you get used to it, you will be doing this this way only, and it, this way you will be sure that your content will scale beautifully everywhere. Okay, so, uh, and again, you can see here it uh, nicely scales. Of course, this side is responsive, so uh, those elements nicely reflow and so on. All right, let's go back here. And uh, another point here, and it's a, this is a bit of a, a new topic in responsive web designs, and it came out about this year sometime in spring, uh, because when we're doing responsive web design, we usually think about uh, defining media queries, uh, horizontal media queries. So the width, the minimum and maximum width of at which your, uh, your design should scale or reflow. But actually, the specification for the media queries is not limited to a minimum or maximum width. It's also, it has also height. So you can also define the way or redefine how your content flows on different devices or how it scales actually based on the height of the screen that it is being displayed. 
And I don't like to show this example because it's sort of a promo of some very known company, but well, it's really a good one. So unfortunately I will show it. Uh, but you can see here uh, that this, there is this carousel and if I start scaling my browser window, uh, not horizontally, but vertically, you can see that it changes the, uh, it sort of clips, you know, this image of the iPhone. If I go even further, well, if I had more, if I had a higher uh, vertical resolution, because here I have a beamer, so it's, uh, so it's not that uh, high as, high as it could be. It's even, there is another step. This iPhone shows up in a full, uh, uh, full screen. So now I have only, only a single uh, change here. But it's, it's worth mentioning that sometimes, let's see how it looks here. Okay, so now it, here it only changes the, the, the size of this um, label here, or the font size. Let's see here. Maybe something else. Okay. Yeah. Not big change, but basically it is something to remember that we're not limited to width media queries. We also have height media queries, which can actually um, modify your content appropriately. All right. So, what are the tools? So, there are, you know, there's a notepad, there's millions of tools out there that actually can do media queries today so or responsive web design. Maybe not millions, but uh, there is a couple of, of tools like this that can do responsive web design. And uh, it happens that I work for Adobe, so I'll show you a tool that comes from Adobe. I'm not saying this is the only tool, and I'm saying this is one of the options that, that you have. It's a, sort of a, this tool, it's called Reflow, and it's, it's a, sort of a research project that we've been working on inside of Adobe. You can actually go ahead, if you go to creativeadobe.com, uh, so there's a, this creative cloud, you can sign up there with a free account and, and play with that tool. So uh, it's available for you today. Uh, but as I said, this is a research product that we've been working on. And so let me show you Reflow. Uh, so again, uh, let's start uh, with the scr from scratch. So we can see it has a nice view where we have on the left-hand side some properties panel where we can start modifying certain elements uh, on, on, on our design. We have a grid, s grid system, so it has uh, by default 12 grids uh, or 12 column uh, grid, but you can of course uh, define different number of columns. You can play around with the grid system, set it gutters, values and s some other stuff. Let me show you how you can work with it and quickly do a few things and then I'll jump into actually showing you how you define media queries. Uh, so first of all, how you make a, a design. Uh, you create, let's say I want to add new icon and you just select, I have a icon. Okay, before I go further, sorry. I want to show you where I'm aiming. So what is, what the design I'm planning to do. Uh, I have it here, I have a complete project. So I want to do something, I want to build a front page of a tutorial for Reflow itself. So this is my goal. And at the end, what will happen, you will see that it will nicely become a responsive website. So the things will lay out differently, the things will uh, flow according to a screen resolution. All right, so let me go in and create it from scratch. So that's the goal. And here I can go into assets, add a new icon and position it wherever I want. I want it to be somewhere over here in the top uh, left corner. I can add some text elements so I can put a text field where I put a title of my site getting started uh, with Reflow and I can go ahead and start adding more. Uh, there's like a div tag so I can select, you know, certain area and it creates actually a div tag in general 
um, behind the scenes. So you, you get the point how you can define a basic layout. And I, I could start actually defining it this way. I'm defining it sort of a desktop down approach. Uh, I can change it to be uh, mobile first, so I can change the orientation of the media queries, but that's uh, another topic, so let's don't, don't go to it. Uh, so let's say I, I went through the phase of defining the layout. So that's the first phase that you want usually do. Next thing you can start, so after defining the layout, where things lay, uh, on my screen, I create, I opened a sort of a, a, a next step is I have the basic layout. It doesn't have any styling yet. So what I can do first, I can play around maybe with the font of my title. So I can select this box there, I can go into the styling, I can select a typeface, and the cool thing here, uh, it is integrated with Edge Web Fonts, which is uh, a repository of a web fonts that is free from Adobe. You can use it on uh, commercial projects, and it's and it's integrated here into this tool. And I can look for a pro for a font which is called Lato. I like this font because it's actually designed by a Polish guy, and I'm a, I'm a Polish guy, so I I you know I support my uh, uh, the designers from Poland. So I like Lato. So I selected Lato, it has changed this Lato here, and it added a web font, so it automatically goes to a web font, and it, so also we Edge web fonts, they also contain Google web fonts, so we partnered with Google actually on this one, and we have the open source pr uh, fonts from Google, and we also uh, contributed a lot of fonts that we had, and they are all available through the Edge web fonts um, uh, service. All right, so I added that, I can now play around maybe with some size, so I can set it to be like two EMs. So again, um, uh, relative value, uh, two EMs is good enough, maybe 2.3. I can also play around with the weight of the font. So you can see like from going from bold to very thin, but I want to stick with the default one. All right, that's one thing I can do. Next one, I maybe I want to set some background here that is uh, very, similar to what the icon of Reflow um, has, sort of the stripes effect. The way I can do it, I can add a new image, uh, a background image for my div element, and I can select it, and I have this uh, single pixel wide image that has few stripes on it, and it will actually repeat and it will add me this uh, striping effect. Of course, I can add some background color that is sort of a bluish, like uh, um, okay let's yeah something like this okay that's cool enough that makes it little look like uh, uh, the uh, the icon of the reflow itself and maybe I want to add some nice vignette effect around uh, this box here so what I can do here I can add a shadow and it has to be inset shadow and I can increase the blur so I'm not so if I set the blur to about 200 pixels you'll see that it has added nice this vignette effect. And so you can see that you know with this tool you can do some sort of a styling. And now once I'm done with it I can actually go in and I can um uh view preview in Chrome save and you can see that this is actually running in Chrome so I can test it as well how it runs. So it generates HTML as a preview for me. Okay, so let's skip the styling uh, part. It's not so relevant here because we want to go to this uh, uh, to this step where we actually responsify. I know this is not a good English word, but I coined this word, so responsifying your design. Uh, so I have a static design right now. I want to make it responsive. So it's fully styled now, and I can start, as I told you, uh, applying the design first approach. So design first approach is, as I told you, is that I'll be going almost pixel by pixel, either going up or down. In this case, I have a desktop first 
uh, side here. So I'll be going down up to the mobile resolutions and looking at my design visually with my eyes and looking with, for places where things will start breaking places where things will not look good anymore to, uh, to your users. So let's go down here and I'm going down, down, down. Right now everything is cool, uh, but I can see, oh, there it is. Here at some point, you know, my title here breaks into two lines. I don't like it. I want my titles to be in a single line, let's say. Uh, well, what I can do here, I can go few pixels back where it still was good okay here it still is good and I can now start modifying my design so the way I can do it is I want to let's say change that those boxes with the tutorial steps they are not in two columns anymore that they'll be in a single column W the way to do it, I can select this single box here and I can make it 100%. So it will reflow the next to it into a new line. And I can repeat that uh, same technique for other uh, boxes as well by selecting them all together. And let's change it to 100 pixels size, the width. And for those two elements here, this one and this one, I have to s also m fix the... Uh, the left padding, uh, sorry, the left margin, which actually pushes them a little bit to the right. So I want to set it to zero. So now it's all set nicely. Okay, okay. I didn't do a very important thing. I need to go back. I didn't add a breakpoint, sorry. <laughs> because it's not that smart, it didn't do it for me. So the way to add a breakpoint at this point is just by clicking this button. And it just r created a break breakpoint at 993 pixels. Okay, and this is where I should be actually modifying my uh, layout. So again, let's fix this. 100 pixels like this. Those two guys here, okay, this one and this one should have the left margin also set to zero. Okay, now I'm good. So if I go back a pixel here, it's like this, two columns. Here, starting from here, it's a single column. So you can see it starts to reflowing things. So now what I do, I go further. I, go st I start going down further. And I'm not worrying about that if this is a, a, a resolution for a tablet or this is a resolution for a smartphone. I'm worrying about my user, what he or she will see. Um, okay, so let's go further down. Oh, I don't like you know the way the text breaks here. So maybe it's a good actually uh, point to bring that box here at the bottom of the screen. Uh, so the way I can do it, I can actually drag and drop it and maybe put it somewhere over here. There we go. Make this box, uh, sorry, this container 100% uh, wide. So it fills this gap here on the right. There we go. And we also can fix some of the margins again. This one to zero like this. And same thing applies to this guy. So I can fix it. Come on. 100% and maybe reflow it like this. And I could also play around with those guys, maybe change those visually. Okay, this could be like that. Okay, again, I didn't add a breakpoint. Come on, what's going on with me? You didn't tell me. You should have. It's your fault. <laughs> All right, so again, it was breaking here. I should have added a breakpoint here. And of course, repeat that step and so on. So you, you, you see the point. I don't want to go down because it's about, th I should add three more breakpoints. So let's. Uh, we don't have that enough time, so uh, let's go. Let's jump to the last step, where we have our design ready, and you can see there's okay, there's this breakpoint, this one, 
basically looks like this. There's at 650 and 510. And this is, as a, as a designer, I created those breakpoints. And they now I can, of course, uh, I can create another page. I don't want to create another page. I want to uh, view it in a preview in Chrome. Save. And it's now in Chrome, so I can test it. It's nice and beautiful. But I want to test it on a mobile device. How can I do it? Well, let's try to use, there is also in, in uh, Reflow, there is this built-in tool which is called Edge Inspect. This is uh, a tool that you can use also. It's available for free from Adobe Creative Cloud. It's, uh, it allows you to test your designs either running in Reflow or even your designs working in, uh, which are w running in a browser uh, on the mobile devices. And you can uh, do it very easily. So on my mobile device, let me first launch a tool to share my mobile screen with you. Okay, there we go. On the mobile device, I have Edge Inspect installed as well. And hopefully my network is running correctly. Yes, it is. Okay. And if I, where it is. Okay, let's put that guy aside here. And let's go back to Reflow and put this guy aside here. So you actually can see on my phone running. And I can see that at s this, uh, title here doesn't lay out good. So me as a designer, I didn't go further down enough in Reflow to, to check that on mobile devices, or in this case on my iPhone, this will not look good anymore. So what I can do here, I can actually go visually to that point where it actually breaks like this. Oh, there it is. And maybe 320 pixels, that's something, a resolution of, of the smartphone here, of my I I iPhone. And I can add a breakpoint, and I can start pushing this up. And both, I push it up in, in Reflow, and it pushes up on my, on my phone. And maybe I should play around on that breakpoint, I should play around a little bit with the size of my phone. So, okay, there it is. So, actually, I can go back. Okay, this looks beautiful. This is the way I want it. So, now I'm really ready and I can show it to my customer and for some approval or something like that, the design is fully functional. Okay, uh, that actually was my last point I wanted to share with you today. Uh, I went further than I expect, uh, faster than I expected. So we have a few uh, minutes for some Q&A. So do you have any questions? Please raise your hand. Ah, you want to look at the CSS. Okay. Uh, so this is not something to be proud of. <laughs> uh, this tool, as I told you, it's a research project. And it's also, but still, you know, First of all, let me show you Responsive Inspector. So it shows some, oh, okay. Let's go in here and maybe let's go like this. Like this. And where do we have, okay, where is the CSS? Oh, there we go. So this is the CSS that it generates. This is the for the whole site. So right now it's all based on IDs. So each element gets its own ID. You can apply. You can also name the elements. Right now it's also possible in Reflow. Then it also would probably apply that in the CSS. So by by name. But if you don't name those, it will actually create you uh, CSS by IDs. But another thing here, and that's a that's thank you for that question here, is that. You can go to any element that you defined, and here, in the very bottom here, you can click this, and it will show you uh, 
the CSS that it has generated for that element. And actually by clicking this icon here, it will copy it to your clipboard and you can paste it into your, uh, your you know, you use Notepad, Dreamweaver, I don't know, Sublime, whatever, you know, HTML editor you're using and you can use those values here. So as I said, any any element here, click here and there you go, you can see there's this background with assets and so on defined. Okay, uh, so thank you for that question. There was another one. Uh, is it able to open uh, the existing project in uh, HTML and no. CSS? No, unfortunately not. <laughs> this is only, uh, o you can only start from scratch, mm -hmm. but what we are doing and in, in the next preview of this uh, tool, uh, that is probably coming before the end of this year. Uh, what we are pr planning to do is an actually integration with Photoshop. So the cool thing about it is so that you'll be able to do, a fo in Photoshop you'll be able to design your site, a static site, and you'll be able to import it into Reflow, and it will turn uh, like text elements into text Reflow text elements and so on. And layout, the, the basic layout, and then the basic layout, uh, static layout imported from Photoshop, you will start responsifying, but you will not have to use Reflow for styling, for designing, actually. But unfortunately, you cannot use it for already existing HTML. But that's a good question. Thank you. There is some. Do you have an equ another question? Uh, just quickly, uh, for the other guys, uh, there's some project, webflow.com, or something similar. And I think in the future with better prices. <laughs> yeah, as I told you, there. Are, this is not the only tool that that is available for a responsive web, but it's one of those that is is there. Okay, thank you. <laughs> you will you had never a see me, right? Hi. Oh. Uh, thanks a lot for showing us how this tool works. I'm a graphic designer or web designer, let's say, and I was just wondering if. Uh, it is supposed that you just edit the site on the go. I guess you you have some planning before getting to Reflow and do all those changes of layer and layers and stuff. So uh, I've heard about having some integration with Photoshop. Mm -hmm. Do you actually can have like all the Photoshop, uh, like all the breakpoint designs in Photoshop and import them? I think that would be so helpful, you know? Like I have my full desktop design I have my mobile design, and I can tell them those two things are the same design, and he will make some magic, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, n not not yet. <laughs> it's not there yet, like this. Um, to be honest, uh, personally, I would love to have capabilities of this tool inside of a Photoshop. So, like you know, being able to make a, a responsive, like defined breakpoints in Photoshop and start scaling down. I think. That but would be so useful instead it, it of just yes. designing one site and, and just be playing on the go because uh, you actually work in the interaction of the site previously to just moving layers around and stuff. I don't think that's the way and to go. Uh, this is a very good feedback actually for you know the product team at Adobe where I work. So this is this is something I will bring back home. <laughs> let's say thank you. Thanks a lot. There was a question. You had a question. Uh, the question is if it has any features for responsive emails. No, no, n not at not at this point. <laughs> As I said, this is a research project, so it's still in a very early stage. It's a preview, although it it can generate, it can you can do a lot of with it, but still, you know, and a responsive web is still a new topic. So, at least for Adobe in this case. All right, but thank you. Good question. Any more questions? Over there. Um, I, are you thinking of adding a feature to let you define a class um, rather than using the IDs for the CSS? Yes, yes, very good question. And I, this is actually something that the product team for Reflow is working on. So you'll be able to find define like classes and styles, and those classes will be applied into. So you'll be actually actually reuse certain classes. So so based on some, you'll design here and you'll create a class and then when you recreated that uh, maybe on another page or something you will just apply the class to it. But this is this is something that definitely is coming. 
Any more questions? You had a question? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Well, y usually you you want to do some research. You know what? Uh, can you repeat the question? Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, so the question is that uh, you basically, when you design with this tool, you know the content pretty well. So you know that the text will not be maybe longer than certain uh, length of it. But uh, w when there is a user-generated content, while w once the site goes live, let's say, then things may start, you know, breaking apart. Yeah, th this is true. But you know, but before you start designing, you probably should do some research. You know, what what are the values? What are what's the possible like a uh, uh, maximum width of a or the text length of a d in a data model, and you know, try applying to that. There's not really a good solution, at least I don't know <laughs> any for, for this. And of course you cannot, uh, you know, there's things will break, but you know, and then you can go back and fix it. But you know, you cannot probably think about everything ahead. So there's always, there has to be s this look back. Okay, certain things will at some point will have to be fixed. Okay, right. I'll have to finish this. Uh, sorry, we're going to run out of time. Okay. Right. Uh, so, everyone, please give a warm applause to Mr. Thank you George. very much. Okay, and I have a last minute announcement. There will be a history of computers on our committee's stage done by John Maddock Hall. Anyone interested, please make your way. Other people, please stay on the stage for the next really exciting talk.